What's up, sons? It's Blind Rod with Son of a Tech once again, and today I'm going to show you guys how to mine Nexa. That'll include wallet setup and node full node setup on Windows, as well as how to mine it on Windows 11. And then we'll talk about how to mine it on Hive OS. Thanks for tuning in, and let's get into it right after a word from today's sponsor. Today's sponsor is myself. I recently launched a crypto mining e-course at sonofatech.com and it includes nine steps to cover when you decide to start your crypto mining journey. This is specifically pertaining to 2023 crypto mining profits and taking advantage of the down market to achieve skyrocketing growth as we move into the next halving of Bitcoin. You'll learn buying mining equipment in a bear market, using outside investment to speculative mine, begin mining once profit is established, sell mine crypto to pay for electricity, Hold and prep for the bull run, sell at the top of the bull market, sell mining equipment at the top of the bull market, and begin investing in land and power so that you can bring in outside investors to utilize excess resources. Thanks everybody for your support, and I hope you enjoy the course. Let me know what you think of it in the comment section below. All right, welcome back everybody. So today what we're going to be mining is Nexa. It's on coin market cap, ranked at number 513. It is sub penny, so pretty sub sub penny but the block reward is quite high and it has been at the top of hashrate.no for quite some time now so it's finally time for me to get into showing you guys how to mine it on mining pool hub you can see here that there are a lot of pools that have adopted it and today we're going to be going over utilizing viper.net because it is a community member and I am not sponsored by Viper.net, but I always like to support those who support the channel. The first thing you're gonna need is going to be the Windows Wallet. We're gonna go ahead and go into the Windows Wallet now. And for first things first, we're going to right click on the desktop and say new folder, and we are going to name it Nexa. Now that we have the folder name added, we're gonna go into the antivirus settings on Windows by just typing in antivirus. And then we can scroll down and we can hit the manage settings on the virus and threat protection. Then from there, we can scroll down and say add or remove exclusions. And then we'll click yes. Under exclusions, we're going to add an exclusion for a folder. We're going to select Nexa and click select folder. This will allow you to keep your antivirus in check while also approving the miners that normally get flagged. And that is pretty much what you'll need to do unless you want to turn the antivirus off completely. I'll leave that up to you. Once again, just a disclaimer, I don't recommend installing miners on a machine that you have any other financial information on. I also don't recommend installing the, even the wallet on anything like that. So just make sure that you're practicing the best safety that you can. And from there, we'll go ahead and continue on. So the first thing we're going to do is download the full node wallet by clicking the download button. It will tell us that it isn't commonly downloaded and make sure that you trust it. So we're going to click the little ellipses and just say keep. And at that point, it'll make us do even more. And we'll have to click the down button and say keep anyways, because remember, this is the scan. We're going to click the show and folder and we're going to do the little cut button. Then we're going to select the desktop and the new Nexa folder that we've created, and we're gonna paste it right into there. So now we have our installer for the setup, and I will now just double click to install. Make sure you get the download from the proper website. Okay, so now that we have it downloaded, we're just gonna double click to install and tell Windows yes, and then click the next button, next button, and install. At this point, we'll click next and finish to run nexa.x64. It will say use the default data directory or a custom. In this particular situation, we're gonna do a custom because we created the exception and we are going to go into our nexa desktop folder and then the nexa folder and select that one and click okay. And it does say wallet is not password protected. Your funds must be, may be at risk. So you can go to settings and then select encrypt wallet. So we'll say, okay, we're gonna go a high. You will have to wait for this to sync and you'll get your progress at the bottom. But for now, what we'll do is click hide. Try to resize the window here so we can see everything. There we go. And we're gonna go to the settings button and click the encrypt button and then type in our password and click okay 
it will say are you or are you sure you wish to encrypt we're going to say okay and it will close down you'll get the message that it's closing down you can allow access through the firewall as well just keeping in mind that you want to make sure you download it from an official source so we'll click allow then we're going to search for the next app and reopen it going to click the hide button as it catches up and one of the things I like to do now is go into the file selection and click the backup wallet and it will give us a new section to go ahead and back up to I'm going to go to the desktop and create a new folder maybe name it encrypt just to make sure and then we are going to do I'm going to go into there and then just say next a backup or name it something clever and click save and it will save it to that folder. And now we're going to want to plug in a USB drive into the system. You can see here this was actually an Ubuntu server install, but we're just going to go ahead and right click and say format. We'll do a quick format. We'll rename this keys or something less conspicuous or obvious. I should say it'll say format complete. We're going to go ahead and right click and cut the encrypt folder and go back in. We're going to go into our keys folder and paste it there. Then we are going to right click and we are going to select the turn on BitLocker option. If you do have a smart card, I would recommend utilizing it for basic users. We can say use a password and click next. You can save it to a Microsoft account if you like or you can print the recovery key or save to a file. Now, this is kind of the difficult part. If you save to Microsoft Cloud, obviously Microsoft is going to have access to that and I wouldn't recommend it. If you save to a file, you wanna put it in another place that is safe so that you can recover it from there, or you can print the file and have a hard copy that you put into a safe. I'll leave that option up to you, uh, but for now, what we are going to do is just save it to the file and we'll leave it in our documents folder and click next remember to move that to a different encrypted space if you move it to the same drive well then you've encrypted your unencryption key and you defeat the purpose right you won't be able to recover it so i will use encrypt use disk space only so that it's faster you can say full drive if you like and we'll do compatible mode and do the start encrypting. Now what will happen, let's see, wait for this to finish. Okay, so it'll tell you encryption is complete and what will happen is, is if you unplug it and then plug it back in, you will be prompted to actually go in and unlock it with BitLocker. So you click the little notification, put in your password and click unlock and then click open files to view. And then we'll have our little data folder there, all encrypted and safe and ready to go. Now let's get into the fun part, which will be getting our wallet address. So we're going to go to the receive button. We're gonna name this mining for the label. Amount doesn't matter. And you can put a message in there like address used for mining. And then we can say request payment and then we will get our address right here. So we're gonna go ahead and copy this out and this will be our public address. And we'll just open a quick notepad and paste in our address right there. You can see here that we have now been synced. So should all be good to go. Let's go back to overview. And then we are going to go into mining it. So let's go back into our browser and there are two miners that we'll utilize today. The first miner is gonna be the Rigel miner. If that's pronounced correctly or incorrectly, let me know in the comment section. That being said, it is for NVIDIA only. However, it does currently have the best NVIDIA performance for NVIDIA GPUs. If, but if you're utilizing AMD GPUs, you can utilize LOL miner. Now LOL miner will support both NVIDIA and AMD. But to get things started, we'll go over the Rigel version. So we're gonna go ahead and click the download button, click the open in folder. We're gonna right click and say cut. And then we're gonna go into our desktop and our Nexa folder. 
I'm going to just create another folder in here or we don't even need to because it'll create the folder. So we're going to go ahead and right click and paste, right click and say extract all, say extract. And then we have our rygal.exe with our batch files. So we're going to edit the next the batch file by right clicking, clicking the show more options and clicking the edit button. Windows will protect the PC. We'll click more info and run anyways. And then we are going to notice that Viper pool is already in here. It is the first one. So you can have backup pools if you like, but we're going to go ahead and remove them. And then we just need to grab our wallet address. So we're going to go into our other notepad on this tab and do a control C and come back here to our wallet address and control V and then click the file and save button. At this point, we can double click the nexa.batch file. You'll see here that it displays that we're mining on an RTX 3060. It tells us what pool that we are mining on and so on. So then it will start to mine. Now, if you want to find the best geographical location for your own, you can come over to here and find the Nexa pool and click the start mining button and you will get the information. It even tests your latency, right? And you can get the pool that you need. So whichever one comes out at the top for the best latency, you click the down button and you'll just copy this to clipboard, come back to the Nexa pool that we selected and you can just highlight into here, this section after the stratum P TCP and can press control V and then you can do control S to save it. Should only have one stratum plus TCP in there. So we'll remove one because when we copied it, it gave us the full stratum and press control S. And now we've added the best miner for our location and we can come back in here. You see that we have the RTX 3060 mining at 52 mega hash a second about at 169 watts. It has our efficiency level and all of that. All of that can be tuned in with overclocking, but overclocking for Nexa will be covered in a separate video. So we're going to go ahead and control C out of that and say yes. We're going to go ahead and close this and we're going to take a look at LOL Miner. Make sure you utilize the official GitHub for LOL Miner. Scroll down and find the version for Windows 64. Click the open folder. We're going to once again do the cut option. We're going to go into the Nexa folder paste it into here, right click and say extract all. And then once we're in here, we're going to find the pre-made batch file for Nexa in particular. So we can scroll down until we get to the end, right click it and do the show more options and click edit. We'll get the prompt from Windows. We'll click more info and run anyways. And we will then modify this one. So we'll utilize this to grab our address, come back over here. We'll paste that into our wallet section. And then for the pool, we will go back to the viper.net, drop down, click copy the keyboard, key, clipboard, excuse me, come back into here and paste this into our pool. In this particular case, we will be removing the stratum plus TCP because it'll add that automatically. Control S, and then we will come back into our folder and double click the mine Nexa will allow access to the public networks. And you can see here it detects both the 3060 as well as the RX 5700 XT. You can see it does look like the RTX 3060 is only getting around 44 mega hash a second, much better on the Rigel miner. However, we are able to mine on our 5700 XT, which is showing about 35 mega hash a second. That being said, it does look like the actual hash rate has caught up to Rigel. We're showing 52 mega hash a second on the 3060 and 40 mega hash a second on the 3060. We'll cover efficiencies and all of that in another video and in the overclocking video. So there you go. There's how to mine Nexa on Windows PCs. Let's go ahead and hop into the Hive section, give you guys the info over there, and then we'll get it wrapped up. Okay, so now in Hive, we can click into our farm or you can create an overall flight sheet if you prefer. We're gonna go ahead and click the flight sheets option. We will do the select down and select Nexa. 
We will select the wallet. If you need to add the wallet that we found earlier through the notepad, you can click the add wallet and enter the address here and click create. We're going to select the windows wallet that I have here. And then we are going to select Viper and then we had done our tests. So if we want to know the fastest, of course, we can go back to the pool and confirm that the US Northeast with the 5084 was our fastest or wh whichever one, right? I think we are actually this one Midwest, right? Was the fastest. Make sure you check on their pool site. And then we can just do basically a backup server if we like, and then click apply. At this point, then we will go ahead and select down and we will for AMD and Nvidia select LOL miner for the Rigel miner. We'll select the Rigel miner for this one. I already have a Rigel miner. So we're going to do the AMD Nexa sheet and we'll cl click create flight sheet. Now to apply this flight sheet to a rig, you will go back to your home devices under workers and you can do one of thing one thing if you select a couple of rigs you can select two and then come to flight sheet and then you can do more coins select nexa and then find the lol miner that we just created here right you can select the rigel if it's nvidia and then you can select if you want to go by per rig you can still do the same thing by selecting here or you can click in click the flight sheet and then click more on the coins, find Nexa, and then hit the go button from there. At that point, if you're wanting to monitor it, you can always go into the remote access and do a hive shell start or a shell in the box and click that. And then select hive shell. And once you are logged into the hive shell in the browser, you can use the command miner, M-I-N-E-R if it's working sometimes it's laggy all right just making sure that's working let's go ahead and reopen it and see sometimes if it's finicky it might not go in this case we might need to use a different shell option usually you can type minor let's go ahead and see what's going on here it does show it all offline we're getting low hash rate etc this might need a reboot Let's make sure that we don't have anything funny going on on overclocks. Yeah, it rebooted it. Once it comes back up, we'll take a look. For now, we'll go ahead and run it on another miner just in case something funny is going on there. Okay, this miner is coming back up. We're going to do a hive shell start again since it closed it. I'm going to open our hive shell on this one that we just started. Type in miner to bring it up. Just monitor and make sure the miner starts working. So I could detect it, everything it's building the data set and starting to take off some cases. It looks like with the reboot, this has begun to start mining as well. So we'll just go ahead and go into the 5600 type the miner and switching the sheet obviously gave us a little bit of a hiccup there with overclocks, etc. that were programmed into the previous flight sheets and just hung sometimes that happens but it does look like we're up and running so that is how you would mine with amd and nvidia on hive os however like i said i recommend the rigel miner for nvidia so just change that miner out accordingly okay so let's go back to monitoring your hash rate to do that you'll go back to the pool and you will open your notepad and right click and say copy from the address that we got from the wallet. We'll paste that into this little search box up here and viper.net will eventually pop open the pool. You can see here and then we'll click into it and it will show us our current hash rates. And basically the way you can read this is that you'll see your current and effective hash rates. You will see your balances that have been unpaid, the immature and the unpaid. Immature can be basically not guaranteed, unpaid would be guaranteed. And then you have your earnings. So at this point, well, sorry, immature would be once it's 100% confirmed, right? So unpaid would be before the payout threshold is reached. It does mean essentially once you're in this confirmed stage that the payout is getting confirmed. And then you'll have your earnings and your estimated earnings over time. And that pretty much covers it. So there's how to mine on both Windows as well as Hive OS for Nexa. If you 
found this video helpful, leave a like, comment, subscribe down below. If you want to know what I'm mining and what my decisions are on a day-to-day -day basis for what to mine, check out sonofatech.locals.com. Also, be sure to check out my crypto mining e-course at sonofatech.com, and I'll see you next Tuesday.